there's so much blessing in the Lord using a role model that operates in the kingdom so you could operate in the kingdom as well. Because as you watch them, they transfer an anoint an, an anointing to you just by watching their behavior. Do you know that people in the satanic kingdom, they are they are influenced to do certain things based upon what they see. So if they see a certain darkness or demonic activity, like they'll grow into doing that same thing because that's what they're watching. Well, in God's kingdom, he on purpose will pitch you around a sore because that's what he wants you to learn. He wants you to learn honor. He'll pitch you around someone that has self-control. He'll pitch you around someone that's mature, that they don't handle situations based upon revenge. They handle situations based upon revelation. They steward their emotions correctly according to the word of God, according to the will of God. And so that's also the ability of the Lord. What he does is he'll pitch you around someone that is already housing qualities that he wants you to house as well. They'll be in your vicinity somehow. You'll come into proximity. You'll be able to view them so that they could arouse a divine desire in you to accomplish a goal of where the Lord actually wants you to be. In Matthew 25, when we see Jesus telling this parable about the talents, you notice the one that dug the talent in the ground was around two other sores. So he wasn't a solo sower. He was in the presence and company of sores. So when he dug that, that talent in the ground, we're, we're seeing that he is resisting the presence of God all around him. You see what I'm saying? He has to resist it because he's around sowing mantles that's real strong. The one with the five talents has a strong sowing of mantle on him. The one with the two talents got a strong sowing of mantle on him. And he, he has to strongly resist it because he's around it. He, if he go to the left, he look at the one with the five, he's sowing. You go to the right and look at the one with the two. He's sowing. So he's around sowers. See, the Holy Spirit strategically will pitch you around what he wants you to learn. Do you know that in my ministry, I could share this with you. Um, if there's somebody that I know is a true sower, I would mix their seed with someone that's not a true sower. And over the years, I have watched people that wasn't true sowers become true sowers. And you wonder what happened. <laughs> yeah, because I, I knew that you weren't no sower. I knew, I knew that you wasn't a sower. I knew that that wasn't in your heart. There was people that watched me for years, never sowed nothing into me. They watched me for years. <laughs> They didn't care if I ate, drank, but they needed me. They didn't care if I had something to eat, if I if I had somewhere to live. They didn't care nothing about me. But they, <laughs> oh, prophet, oh, prophet, oh, prophet. And I can't profit nothing off of you. You you prostitute me. You take you take all my goods. I'm sowing seed in you. I'm paying. I, I'm giving you services. Uh, I don't get no services out of you. So over the years, I have watched people. When I knew someone was genuine, they was a true worshiper. I would take. I would mix that person and immerse them with the person that was a genuine talent exchanger. You ain't hear what I said. There was a genuine talent exchanger. And I've seen that people would convert over. Saints, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Satan is not the one just taking people's names 
and destroying them. If Satan could take your name and destroy you, God could take your name and bless you. If Satan could take your picture and work witchcraft on you, God could take your picture and work miracles on your person. Mande, vulisa, gronkunos ele korene. He could take the very image that you have and speak divine words over it and stir you into your destiny to be great, to be mighty, to be pure, to be powerful, to be an achiever, to be a champion. How do you think Satan got that idea? It got it from God. The law of contact. The law of contact. The law of contact. Who do you think Satan got that idea from? God. The law of contact. You notice all the woman did was touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Contact and she's made whole. She didn't touch him but an item that was upon him. But even the item because it was upon him was carrying him. That's just a sidebar. Even if you touch a man of God's clothes, there's a transference in the clothes. Even if you touch their clothes, their clothes is carrying the dimensions of their office, even their clothes. Many people, they miss. They miss so many miracles. Do you understand there's thousands of miracles that's supposed to happen to you today? But there's many people so stupid, they'll never receive the miracles because they're blind. They can't see squat. All they could see is their toothbrush, the tissue. That's all they could see. All they could see is plates and bowls and cups. They can't see in the spirit. If you look at the garment of Jesus, it was inside the tomb, but there's an angel right next to the garment. That means that the angel is actually a steward of the garment as well. When Elijah double portion fell, it was simply a garment that Elijah would wear around his shoulders. So when we say that he got a double portion of his spirit, Elijah's spirit is inside of this garment that he wore on his body. So the reason why you see all these superhero movies where somebody has a garment, they use it, or they have a torch, and they use it, and there's supernatural stuff happening. They got that from Moses. Moses had a staff in his hand, and when he would strike the waters... Elijah had a staff in his, he had a, a cloak in his hand. Elisha had a cloak in his hand. They struck the waters and the waters were part. All these superhero movies came from a man of God, a prophet of God, that when they moved in the earth realm, even the items they possessed carried their spirit. They, they cast lots for Jesus' garment. Why they wanted the garment? Because they knew if I get the garment, I possibly could heal blind eyes. If I get the garment, I possibly might be able to raise the dead because everything that his spirit did, now it's inside of this garment. Maybe I could do the very same thing that he did. If he multiplied five loaves and two fish, if I get the garment that he wore, I possibly might be multiplying five loaves and two fish. If he was able to open up deaf ears, when I get the garment, I might be opening up deaf ears. If Jesus was able able to take care of 12 men. He was wealthy. If he's able to take care of 12 men and their families, and they're able to leave everything to follow him and still eat, still drink, still have abundance because Jesus is wealthy, then if I get his garment, I might have wealth like Jesus. Saints, Jesus had a wealth anointing while he was on earth, and that's mighty. He had a wealth anointing. Jesus took care of people. He had an abundance grace on him. And when Jesus died and rose again, the resurrection carried the next phase of dunamis power for provision. 
your provisional life is way more grand than you have imagined. What the Lord has made for you to experience in this month and the next month and the next three months of your life is way more grand than you ever experienced in the totality of your existence in the body. Do you understand God's urgency to shock you with wealth? shock you with provision, shock you with prosperity. This is his desire. This is his longing. He wants to give you so much money, so much provision, so much doors that your soul will be overflowing with thanksgiving and praise. If you let the Lord do it, he'll take you into prosperity that will gratify all of your imaginations if you let him do it. He'll bring you into wealth that will satisfy all of your fantasies if you let him do it. Remember, he said he give you the power to get wealth. Now, what is the power to get wealth? Is the power to work. You know, even when God make you wealthy, you're going to have to have a work ethic. You got to work with that money. You can't be sleeping all day long when God give you wealth. I don't sleep all day. I'm constantly fulfilling assignments. That's what, that's what, that's why some people be like, you know, I, I, I want to become wealthy. So I stop working. Baby, as long as you on the earth, there's a work that you must do. That's not a divine desire to not to work. <laughs> you, you, you notice we used to think that. But but as a as a as a king of wisdom and understanding, that's dumb. You know, I'm gonna get to a point where I ain't gonna have to work no more. Baby, as long as you on earth, you here for work. That's why you here. You're not here to stop working. It sounded good. It's as a matter of fact, it sounds good. You know, I'm going to get to a point where I ain't got to work no more. You know, God going to bless me to the point where I ain't got to work no more. God was blessed in Genesis and was working. God is the owner of everything that you call blessing. And he's working. Genesis day one. Genesis day two. Genesis day three. Genesis day four. Genesis day five. Genesis day six. Imagine God is working. We hear all these things, even in preaching. You know, God, uh, he about to bless you to the degree uh, you ain't going to have to work no more. Uh, some of you all in here, you're not going to work no more. Uh, it sounds so good. But you are the workmanship of God in Christ. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. You are the workmanship of Christ. The minute that you stop working. You're exuding the poison from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You're exuding the serpent's personality. To deceive you out of being used by God. Now saints, what is really work? It's where God uses you. So when, when you say, God gonna bless me so that I ain't gotta work no more. So you just said God is gonna bless you so that he don't use you. Because work is God using you. Work is a divine platform for God to expose your supernatural qualities. The quality of patience the quality of self-control, the quality of learning, the quality of assistance, the quality of hospitality, the quality of peacemaking, the quality of wisdom, the quality of knowledge, the quality of perseverance. When you have a job, you have something to persevere towards. Work is a platform where God exposes your supernatural qualities. 
Nobody knows who they are and what they could do until they have work. You notice is at your work where people lie, lie on you. Is at your work where people talk evil about you. Is at your work where people, they, 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 they find ways to try to cut you underneath the cover. Is at work where you have tag team. You got working teams. You got to talk to other people. Now, now you got to deal with demons. You got to deal with their personality demons. You got to deal with their, with their fraudulent personality and fraudulent kindness. Is that your work? When you're not around nobody, you act like a nobody. Because there's nothing being exposed in you. You ever hear people say when somebody get around somebody, they start acting different. You might think that they acting different. But that person needs to be there for you to see what's in them. Saints, we all went to school with them geeky folk. This how, let, me, let me see if I get some big old glasses. Give me some big old glasses. Yeah, I need some big old bazooka glasses. We all went to school with them geeky folk. And when we was around them, this how they... And, and, and it looked like they always got the answers. They always learning. Them niggas know all that the teacher taught on Tuesday, all that the teacher taught on Wednesday. You want to sit next to them when the quiz is going on because they know all the questions. Them niggas, they listen with their life. There's some good behind listeners. And they snore while they sitting there. Their eyes be open and they're still snoring. Saints, never let a never let a fat person film you while you <laughs> while you doing something because they're gonna be breathing in the back. You up there? You up there trying to show off your coat? Yeah, bro. This is this 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 that Balenciaga right here. This that Balenci, and they the, they can't even hear what you're saying because they're. The, <sighs> You don't post a video. You up there talking. You over shout. Cause here, yeah, this ain't been. Bitch... It sound like two horses making love. We all know them people at school with them big old glasses like this here, and they was real geeky. But then when they got around certain folk that was geeky too. You hear how they start talking and they open up. And you're like, is this the same person that was so quiet and reserved? But they had to get around someone that exposed what was in them. See, you, you got to understand, sometimes your presence does not expose what's in people. It's the presence of another. Saints, there are women that don't open up to their husband, but will open up to a girlfriend. That's already witchcraft. The same way if a man will open up to his friend, but don't open up to his wife. That's witchcraft. When you get married, y'all supposed to be the closest individuals in your story. How could your girlfriend know more than your husband? How could your friend know more than your wife? That's witchcraft. That's why I'm telling you that relationships are not the way that God wanted to be. No way. It's going to get correct on the new heaven and new earth. You can't really look for a lot of good stuff in this earth world because people have gone so long in the demonic that they it's first nature to them. When you get mad at somebody you love, you're not supposed to go vent to someone else. If you love them, why would you go harm them by sharing the information to someone else? Now you are harming them. And the Bible says love does no harm. Now you done became harmful. 
The ideology of love in this life has been fraudulent. If you truly love somebody, you'll protect them even when you're pissed off at them. You gonna go tell all their business to someone else so that someone could be angry at them? How is that love? That's hatred. Would you agree? If your child right now drops juice in your car and you call five of your friends and say, this stupid behind little child done pour a drink, you don't love your child. Why would you expose what they did to five people that you didn't even carry in your womb? Now, you're creating a picture for them. So in the future, when they disrespect your child, you can't get mad at that because you empowered them to do that. You painted a picture that your child was stupid to them. That wasn't love. See, when we deal with love, it will convict you of how you portray people to others. You're going to portray them incorrectly and then say that you love them? You're going to empower somebody to dishonor their intelligence and dishonor their smarts. And then you think that that's love. That's not love. That's hatred. The same way you have a man of God. You laugh and joke about your man of God with somebody. You can't say that you love your man of God. You hate them. If you could have secret conversations with someone and talk about your man of God's decision, talk about what your man of God say, talk about what your man of God doing, you don't really love them. You're an enemy to them. Because how do you gather with someone else to create a narrative within them that will cause dishonor, disruption, disrespect? That's not of God. You have to know what the true definition of love is. The more you operate in love, you will cause yourself to be restrained in what you say. You'll block off words. When you love, you block off words. You block off information. You block off information. You block off information when you love. If you love, you'll block off information. That's why I'm telling you, some of you all in this ministry, how do I know all your business for years? You go ask anybody if they know what I know. I know some of, I know some of you all's business front to back. And nobody will know if you got children or if you don't got children, they wouldn't even know. Some of you all, some of y'all, you some of y'all People didn't even know how you look until I tell you to change your picture, picture profile picture. <laughs> I want to see your face on your profile. Don't pick my face on your profile. Don't pick my face on your profile. <laughs> I want to see your face. I cover. I'm a shepherd. I cover. If I want to expose it, if I want to expose information, I can do that. I can do that too. I have the power to do that too. If I want to. That's my authority as a shepherd. Even if I do say so, I can say it. Because that's my authority as a shepherd. When God makes you a shepherd, you done operated as sheep so long, He promotes you. Some of y'all didn't want to show them cross eyes. You better show them sexy cross eyes. Yeah, they're on your picture. Yeah, they're... I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking around. That's a joke. That That's a joke. Uh, you know, a beautiful thing about it, all of you all have beautiful pictures, you know. And that's why um, I'm going to start liking some of y'all pictures just so that you know that I actually love the picture. I love your face. Your face is your identity. Your face is representing the image of God, the significance of God, <laughs> the personality of God. <laughs> yeah, and so it's good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's good. Um, 
all of your pictures are twilight. You know? So, that, that's, that's going to be our new word. You know, and when something is good, it's twilight. So, your picture is twilight. Your style is twilight. It's, it's unique. That's, that's, that's going to be our phrase. So, so, write me right now. Twilight. T Y. No, T W Y. Twyla. T W Y L A H. I know it could be L A, but L A H. That's our own word. I make that word up. You know, I make up words. I'm the word. I make up words. So, your picture is Twyla. Your style is Twyla. See, that's fly, boy. <laughs> that's fly. That's, ain't that fly? Man, I'm see, you gotta understand how I architect so much creativity. You understand that that's fly right there. Ain't that fly? Man, that is fly. Man, ain't that fly? Twat man, that's fly. So 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 now you ain't even gonna say that's fly. You're gonna be like, that's twilight. That's twilight. Yeah, that's twilight. <laughs> what is the goal that you want to reach in finances? Because financial goals is the Holy Spirit at work in you. The Lord likes money. That's why he made it. He enjoys money. And he created money to create happiness. The Lord created money to create defense. In Ecclesiastes, the Bible says... That money is a defense. Money is a defense. Money is a defense. So he created money to defend you. That's why when you are a sower, you're letting your guard down. When you're, are you listening to me? When you're a sower, you're letting your guard down because money is a defense. So it defends you. So when, when you sow money, you're telling the Lord, I let down the defense, you're my defense. That's why you invoke the majestic power of God with sacrificial seed sowing because you're telling him, I let my guard down for you to defend me in this custody battle. I let my guard down for you to defend me in my health. My health report is bad, but I want you to defend me and bring me out. I, I'm, I'm releasing my, my seed because I'm letting my guard down for you to defend my mind. I've been having bad thoughts. I've been having nightmares. I've been having bad imagination, but I'm letting you defend my mind. When you are seed sower, you're telling the Lord, I let down my guard so that you could become my guardian. Protect me, defend. So, so the seed released the pit bull realm of God. The pit bull realm of God. You, you unlock the Rockweiler in Jehovah when you're a seed sower, when you honor him because you're letting your guard down. Money is a defense. Solomon had the revelation from the spirit of God that money defends you. What does it defend you? It defend you in the spirit realm and defend you in all areas of your life. So when you have that seed sowing flow, you are breaking the powers of Satan's bullying tactics. The seed breaks the power of Satan's bullying tactics. How Satan wants to bully you, injure you, and shame you you break and abolish the intent of demons to embarrass your finances, your health, your relationships, and what you produce in this life. Somebody shout glory. You take up the whole armor of God with seed sowing. You take up the torch that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob left off with, and you continue their productivity, their prosperity, their diligence, their intelligence, their wisdom, their knowledge, their focus, their fervency, their fire. That's Twyla. <laughs> That's Twyla. And, and look, 
Look, whenever the spirit of God is ready to raise you up in the kingdom system, he on purpose will let things start firing up in your life that you don't want to happen. He's showing you that it's time for you to return back to your true lineage, which is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Your true lineage, which is kingdom sowing, kingdom waiting, and kingdom reaping. Seed time and harvest. Kingdom sowing, kingdom waiting, and kingdom reaping. There's a mantle for you to sow. There's a mantle for you to wait, and there's a mantle for you to reap. The mantle for you to sow, when you receive that, now you have to also embrace the mantle for you to wait. And when you wait, it takes away all of that addiction to sin and pleasing yourself before time. Remember, when patience cometh, perversion leaveth. Mm, 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 mm.